What's going on YouTube? My name is ADC Art Attack and welcome back to a brand new episode in this Professional Artist vs Children's Coloring Books. This is the series where I, ADC Art Attack, the artist, takes a children's coloring books and attempts to add my own flair to it. During this series we've done various different things and as well as me just adding my own flair to them, it's also a chance for us to work together. This is a chance for everyone to get involved and everyone to color and just have some fun. That is the message I'm trying to get across here. Coloring books are designed for people of all ages and they are just here to have some fun. So with that said, let's have a look at what we've got for today. I heard you, I listened, no really, I do do that sometimes. I'm back with clearly the superior hero of the two big boys. Nope. I don't even like the guy. Dragon Ball. That's right, Dragon Ball. We finally got ourselves some Dragon Ball coloring books. You have been requesting this like crazy and finally, finally, I am bringing it. So today we have two coloring books. Now the reason I purchased two is because, well, you're gonna see when you look inside these things, it is pretty, pretty fun actually. This is, you're gonna like this one. Trust me. On the exterior, these two coloring books look really nice and really nice quality. They look pretty great. This one's a little bit better, but hey, it's what's on the inside that counts. So let's take a look inside these things. If you do want to get yourself some of these coloring books, I will link them down below in the description. Make sure you check them out. And hopefully in the future, you will color one of these alongside me. Just like these guys and girls who managed to find these same coloring books that I have been using and did a great job replicating them. Also those who found new and exciting coloring books and gave them a go. Remember, if you do want to be featured in a future video or you just want to get involved in this, all you have to do is share your creation with me on Instagram, ADC Art Attack, or with the hashtag coloring book challenge. Or if you're not really feeling Instagram, then you can tag me on Twitter. That's ADC Art Attack. So with all that being said, let's take a look inside these coloring books before we get started. And whoo, this is going to be a fun one. So I hope you do enjoy the video. Hit it. All right, so here we have our two lovely Dragon Ball Z coloring books. Now, before we actually get on to looking into this one, I wanted to look at this one first. The reason being is I have had a cheeky little look through them and wow, this coloring book right here is one of the biggest disrespects to Dragon Ball I've ever seen. And I really want you to see what is inside this. So let's have a look. You open the first page and you're greeted with a very nice Dragon Ball Z, 40 illustrations, Dragon Ball Z coloring book. It looks pretty nice. Copyright of Kelly Brixton, whoever you are. What have you done here? So opening the pages, uh, you start off with a really nice image and it doesn't look too bad. However, once you start getting into it, the quality starts to downgrade a little bit, but still, it's not too bad. And then you realize, oh, this is what I've purchased. Yeah, if you can't see what the issue is here, basically, what the hell, who is this? I don't know who this character is and just, what is going on here? As we go throughout this coloring book here, we'll see, I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> I, <laughs> um, um, this, <laughs> no. <laughs> What has happened here? Oh my. Well, can't be seen some sh- What's that? I, I'm done. All right, we're stopping there. We're going to move on and have a look at the other coloring book. A little bit better than this one, I hope. Um, yeah, let's go check that out. Okay, so here is the Dragon Ball Z coloring book for kids and adults. I like that they are marketing to both kids and adults because, hey, coloring books are for all ages and anyone can color one of these. Just pick one up and go for it. And starting this coloring book off, when you open it, the images are actually pretty good. Um, throughout this, they're not too bad. They start off very strong, and uh, I do like the way the characters are. I know it's a little bit difficult to see them, but they look pretty well rendered out from the series itself. There's actually a really nice image right here, and I think I may use this one. It looks pretty good, well rendered out. Yeah, I really like it. And here comes the madness. So, what on earth is going on there? Um... <laughs> Yeah, this is where it gets a little bit crazy. I don't even know what's going on in this last part of the book. What is that? What? I... <laughs> ah, these is just so bad. Okay, guys, so we're going to go through and pick two or three images we're going to use. And yeah, hopefully you do enjoy this video. Let's get on with coloring some of these Dragon Ball coloring book images. Um, <laughs> this is going to be great. Okay, so first one, I wanted to start, before we go pushing the boundaries and trying something fancy and new, I wanted to do something that's, I'm going to consider this a warm-up. And what I mean by that is I want to do something that is the way we would most associate Dragon Ball's art style. So no fancy stuff here, just something we can all do together and follow along with. 
Now I am, as is tradition, going to be breaking down what I'm doing, when I'm doing it, just to help you along if you do want to follow along with this and give it a go yourselves. So to start with, I'm going to start by dropping down the base colours. Now there's no perfect or one singular palette across the show, the styles and tones are always changing, so don't focus too much on that. Try more so to just have colours that blend well together. Here I'm going to be using a vanilla base, because why not? It looks natural and yeah, I mean it works. And with that layer done, it's your decision if you lay a second tone over it. I mean, personally, I kind of want it to be washed out, so I'm going to leave the base a single tone. That's just my personal preference, it's entirely up to you what you do, I just want to keep it like it is. Next up, the shadows. Again, no strict rule here. We can get into ways we shade in the future, but for the basics, uh, let's just say the face, imagine one half is completely shaded and just remove mentally the colour in your head of the light areas. So anything that's sort of sticking out such as the eyebrows, the cheekbones, the nose, etc. Just be aware of those things to, I don't know, just kind of unshade them in the shadowy areas. Here I'm using a soft peach. Um, a single layer is quite nice and if I wanted the entire piece to be washed out, I'd probably leave it as a single layer and just let the vanilla show through. But on camera, it doesn't look so visible or too good. So I'm going to double up here just to make the viewing experience for you guys a little bit better. So that's why I'm doing it. But again, either way, it's cool. Don't sweat it. Out of deep shadows, I like to do three tones, sometimes even four if you consider the white highlights, but I left them out today because I, I kind of know that they are pretty controversial and not many people really like them. So yeah, three tones using a coral here, and it's pretty easy to do, just look for the areas furthest from the light source and sort of loosely follow the first shadow that you laid down, but not perfectly. I've never liked doing that, so follow but don't follow, kind of. Wow, that's actually looking really nice. Um, yeah, I really like the way this looks. I do enjoy coloring this guy. It's been a long time and it's it's sort of second nature to me now because I've been coloring Dragon Ball since I was very, 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 very young. I should probably use this moment right now as we get on to coloring the clothing uh, just to say that the paper quality, the paper quality here is actually pretty good. It does very much remind me of stock paper, so standard cartridge paper. Uh, nothing fancy, but nothing, um, you know, too bad. So it's working very, very nicely and giving a great effect to it. It's sort of giving a very organic, sort of rich effect that you would find in classic sort of manga style. So I really like this paper and it is working well. And the markers I'm using are pro markers and brush markers and the reason I'm doing those is again, once again, we say this every time, it's because they are cheap, super duper cheap. They're about a third, sometimes four times less of the price than Copic markers and that's just why I don't use them. Uh, that's why I steer clear of Copic. I just think they're too expensive for what you get. I know a lot of people want to say to me that the refills are this, that and the other, but hey, I still enjoy using my pro markers and brush markers. I think they work fantastic. They're very cheap. Artists on a budget. Yeah. And yeah, so regarding the clothing, now I will list all of the colours that I'm using here down below in the description, so make sure you check that description out and they will be set in lightest to darkest. But the clothing pretty much follows the same pattern as the skins, so there's nothing fancy again going on here. I'm just doing the same thing that I did with the skins, but I'm doing it to the clothing. The only difference here is I'm actually using the China Blue twice, so I'm actually using that as my second shade as opposed to using a different color i just like to do that sometimes and i'll also be using a gray which again we found out in a previous video that the grays really do just add a nice natural color a nice natural shadow so that's why i'm doing that and yeah enjoy actually you know what i'm gonna leave it right here i'm gonna let this just play out and we're gonna catch you in a moment because i have a surprise for you guys this is not the only drawing so enjoy the remainder of this one and i'll catch you in a moment
Hey, I'll tell you what, that, um, that looks really really nice and we're not going to critique it too much right now i'm going to save it for the end of this video because we are about to move on to the next part now in this part i want to pretty much keep the same style however i want to add a different coloring technique now this is a little bit more advanced but it's not something that's too out of the realm for everyone so i'm going to do my best to explain it to you and hopefully help you along but remember that we are keeping the same technique that we used in the prior drawing we're going to carry that over here but we're just going to add a few little things to change it up and make it look slightly different. Now again, every color that I'll be using for this one will be identical to the one I used in the previous one. I don't want to change up the colors too much. The only exception to this rule will probably be the hair. I will change the colors that I used slightly just to match the style. However, for the most part, the skins, the clothing, it's all going to be the same color. So don't worry too much. As long as you've got those colors down, let's do that. Okay, so here is where the fun begins. This is where we start to add the different style to it to pretty much well, a different technique to it. Keep the same style, but we just want to add a different technique. And that different technique is going to involve us using a little bit of blending, but not too much. So don't, don't be afraid. What we're going to do here is we're going to get some pencils and we're going to use these pencils in key areas, specific areas. And we're just going to very lightly drag them across. Now, it is in your best interest to try to find a skin pastel, something that matches your second shadow or your base shadow, something that just works well to blend across them if you do make any sort of mistakes. So I do have a soft peach on hand just in case there's any problems and I need to soften out some blending. As you can see, it already changes up the entire drawing. It changes the entire sort of look of this and it just brings it to a little bit more detail, a little bit more eye catching. Now, whether this is your personal preference, whether you, whether you enjoy this more or less, it's it doesn't really matter too much. It's just a little bit more eye catching. It just adds a difference to it. And it's just a nice technique. I really like to use it sometimes, but I do understand that there are those out there who just like to do standard Dragon Ball coloring and that is perfectly fine. Don't worry about it. Now I'm going to use this moment just here to say a couple of things. I've been drawing Dragon Ball for many, many years. I've been drawing Dragon Ball for around 15 to 20 years. It's been a very long time and Dragon Ball has been a very important part of my life and my art career. So most of this does come as second nature to me and I'm able to do this without using a reference. Many of you may find that you might need a reference and that is perfectly fine. We all start off somewhere so don't worry about it. I didn't take any special art lessons, I didn't take any special art course, I've just been drawing from reference pretty much my whole life and from that I learned and adapted and went on to create my own pieces of artwork and being able to reference my own material. So. Don't feel discouraged. If you feel like you can't get something right, don't worry about it. Grab a source material, grab a reference and just work from it. Even hell, use one of these as a reference. It's perfectly fine. Just most importantly, do your best to keep this relaxing. Keep art relaxing. Don't stress too much about it. Don't try to overwork yourself. Just keep it calm, keep it relaxed and enjoy. So from this point, I'm just going to say there's probably not much more I can go into here. So I'm going to let the drawing play out. I'm going to let you sit back, relax and enjoy it. I might say a few things towards the end. But hey, when we get to the end of the video, we'll discuss the entire thing as a complete drawing. And we'll compare the two styles and just see what you think about them. So enjoy.
Okay, great. So this is done. However, we're not quite finished with this one just yet. Firstly, I want to put them both up on screen so we can just compare them real quick before I continue on with this. So right here, you can already see the similarities in these styles. However, the techniques are different. And it's up to you to decide which you personally feel is the better version. You can leave a comment down below letting me know. With that being said, we are now going to add a background to the one we've just done, just to spice it up a little bit. So we're going to take some referencing and sort of inspiration from the manga panels showcasing Super Saiyan 3 Goku. So let's get on with that and I'll catch you at the end. Alright, here we are. This is done. I am so happy with how this one looks. Again, no reference was taken for this, so this was just pretty much me doing what I wanted to do. I really do like it. I think it came out fantastic. One of the high points for me is probably that skin. I think the skin looks really, really nice. And the plain background is actually quite cool too. The reason I went for the background like that is due to this sort of harsh electric that they've given the character. There wasn't too much I could really do with it, so I figured I'd play it into the manga type setting. And it worked out pretty well. Looking back at the first one that we did, hey, I really like that as well. I think it looks super clean. Really, really do like that one. I would have liked to have done them both the same image, but to be honest, this Vegito that we just did kind of caught my eye, so I just had to do that. I would really much like for you to leave a comment down below on which one you prefer, the left-hand side or the right-hand side. Now, I'll showcase them without the background first because I think it might sway votes a little bit. I think with the background, definitely the right hand side because it just suits my artistic style a bit more. I do like the way it looks. And with that all being said, I've been ADC Art Attack and I do hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did like today's video, then please leave a like on the video, but most importantly, leave a comment down below with today's two questions. First question was Goku or Superman? Difficult choice. And the second question being, which one did you prefer, the left or the right hand side? I look forward to seeing you in the next episode of the Artist vs. Coloring Books and I do hope you're enjoying this series. Take care. Bye-bye. Oh, and I hope you don't think I forgot. A lot of people request this, so here is the back of these drawings. And I really do like the way the backs look. I think the back of them actually look really, really good. Really like it. See you next time.